Yay, I think it, I think, I think. Let's see. I came on just a second early just to make sure everything was working. find out if we have some sound. Yay! Thank you, Marianne. Awesome! Yay! Black screen and no sound, Jamie. You may need to catch up a second. Um, okay, let me just check on something real quick here. Guys, you mind refreshing? I had to, um, I had to do some redo my things. Let me try something else. Audio. Oh, that is right. Your sound is good, and yay. Okay, and you can see. Awesome. Okay, wonderful. I had to redo my Streamlabs and everything just kind of went crazy on me. So I had to go in and reset everything after that update and hopefully everything works now. And you guys see the Tombstone Treat Box and Design Space Brains on the screen and everything. Hopefully. All right, let's play the intro, guys, and we'll go ahead and get started. Everything seems to be working good. Yay! I was so, 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 so worried. And here is the calendar, guys. And as promised, um, well, I didn't promise a file this week. But I went ahead and put one out for you guys. It's coming out on Wednesday. Um, and it's three files. So I may just do a small file on the, what is it, the 20... 8th, the 28th of the month, somewhere around there. Um, I may just do a small file if I do one because you're getting three files this Wednesday. All right. And I'm about to cover that with you guys. So let's go to the overhead. All right. And it seems to be transitioning better. I'm using my phone to, to do those now. So hopefully that will work better. I saw Sue Danson too. So tonight we're just doing these little small treat boxes but I wanted and uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things in design space especially for all our newbies um, who are just now getting machines or those who are thinking about getting machines. I want to be sure that um, you guys are getting everything you need out of design space. Um, so we're going to cover some of that. 
Now this little box is set up to look like a little tombstone, but with a little bit of effort, you guys can change this piece out. You can slice it off the box, and you can change this to a Santa Claus face, or I mean there's tons of things that you can change it to for themes. Now I left this in the file blank. It's flattened um, on white because I cut it out of gray Cricut paper. Um, but you can go in here and have it right, like um, use this for a place setting. If you're having a Halloween party or you can do it as a um, gathering, like an invite. If you want to do hand uh, given invitations, you can put your date and time and everything under the RIP here. And you can pass these out, like at your church or whatever, and then you'll have your gathering. They'll have their date and time on there, and they get a little treat with it. So this will hold um, the little Sour Patch Packs. I don't know if you guys get these. I just buy the assorted candies. Uh, well, this one just actually had Sweetest Fish and these in it from the Five Below. I get them at Five Below. So these fit in it, and you can get, I think, four maybe. Yeah, four of the nuggets in there, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do it for Christmas, if you do a Christmas theme and change that top out, you can get a chapstick or two in there with some candy. So there's lots of things that you can get in this little box um, for Halloween decor. Super easy, super simple to put together. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and put that together here in a few minutes because it will it takes seconds to put together, trust me. Uh, the file that's coming out Friday, slimline cards are coming back. I made one, I don't know, a month or so ago and gave it to somebody um, because it was just super quick and super easy for me to do and I could cut it on a hand trimmer. But I thought after I got three emails yesterday from various companies talking about their slimline cards, I was like, wow, they're getting a the comeback. So I decided to make some design space files for your Wednesday files. And slimline cards, what that means, guys, this is just a business envelope, like you would get mail a check to a company in, and they come in like three different sizes. This is the large size. I think I threw the box away. I don't know. I think this is a 10. It might be a 9, but I think it's a 10. Um, but I made you three sets of files with envelopes, and they'll be available to you on Wednesday if you're a supporter. Okay? So... Thank you to all of the supporters and the moderators. You guys are fantastic, um, and these files are for you. If you want these, you will have to become a monthly supporter on Ko-fi uh, or a supporter on Patreon, or you can join the QD Collector or Higher membership here on YouTube. So three ways for you to get the files. But the large ones will fit in the large business envelopes. But I made you envelopes in case you didn't have them. And you can, I cut these from um, Hobby Lobby papers. And they make great envelopes so that they look lined. If you're hand delivering them, you can fold them the other way so that the white's on the inside. But I kind of like that little surprise that they get. Okay, And you can get a little bit of depth on them. And the beauty of these are one stamp, mail it, no extra postage. Okay? So, yeah, they're coming, they're becoming very popular again, uh, Jamie. And I think it's because the one stamp, because I know some of my five by seven cards and stuff, I have to have extra postage on them. But I didn't stop there, I made another one with a different type envelope, and you can mail these, same cost, but this one is a gatefold, okay? So you have two card options, but the thing is with these card options is I gave you a, the large here, a medium. I think the mediums are a size 9 envelope. Guys, don't quote me on this because I don't remember all the sizes. I have to look them up every time. And then the small is what I call your checkbook size, your check size. Um, the Dr. Bill envelopes, you know, the little ones. 
they will go and they are also one stamp so all you're going to have six card bases i left all the pretties in the one file the other files are blank so that you have a blank canvas to start with um, to do your cards yeah they're perfect for the holidays one stamp you're done and they can go out you can put a little bit of dimension on them guys but you don't want to get too much dimension because then you will need extra postage if you get it too heavy with embellishments okay just so you know that um, once it goes over I think it's an ounce 1.2 ounces something like that then your postage goes up so just be aware of that but basically those will go as long as they're not too bulky you won't have any problem getting those to go so let's pop over to design space and we will take a peep there let's see I know I have that there we are so here's your file and again, I flattened this to white. All you want to do, if you want to write on there now, you can write on it. Or you, if everything's going to be the same, you can put your font on here, line it up with your party date and time and address, and then select all and flatten. And then it's just going to cut the shape. Now, the reason that I made that white is white does not print. And I cut it from the Cricut gray paper. I have two grays, a dark gray and a light gray, and I cut the tombstone part from the dark gray, and then I cut this out of light gray so I didn't waste ink. I just did my black edging. Same here. Cut this out of the same gray paper, but I printed it on that gray paper as well. Okay? So you just print straight on that color paper if you have a maker. If you have a explore machine, you may want to test. Do I test and cut on a piece of paper before you do a bunch of these and make sure that your um, scanning eye is going to read that color paper. Every Explore Air and Air 2 that I have had, I've had no problem with it reading um, the colored papers. Some people do and there is a difference in the machines and the eyes. So, hi Paula, it's okay if you're late. You can watch the playback. We haven't done much of anything yet. So, um, once you've got it printed on your gray paper, like I said, it's just going to print the black. Let's see. Right here, I printed these on the gray and cut it. And then I cut this out of the dark gray. And I did not ink the edges, but you could ink the edges of this and get a little more depth and dimension with some black. would be really cute. But we're going to go ahead and put this together, and then we're going to talk about design space. You can paint those, Shirley? Cool. These would be fun. You can hand stamp these, guys. If you have some Halloween stamps, you can hand stamp all of this right here. Just cut your panels out of whatever color you want and stamp whatever you have on there. You can have it draw on there if you want instead. You don't have to print. You can change it to draw all day long. So you're just going to fold, and I think I folded this backwards. I did. With this piece here, you're going to fold everything towards you. Everything gets folded towards you on this box. kind of opposite of what we normally do, but that's okay. So everything has been folded towards me. Oops, it didn't change, did it? There we go. It did it again. And I used my little thing and I said transition. We got it. Those doo doo doos you hear are my team telling me it didn't transition. <laughs> So I folded everything toward me on all these score lines right here, guys. Printed on gray. You're just going to fold everything up. And then I just get a little bit of glue and I'm going to put a little bit on this tab. And then this tab. Those are the only two places you need glue on this right here. 
Then you're just going to fold this in. Get that kind of even there. Make sure it stays even. And then you're just going to fold this piece up. That's it. And then I just lay it on the table, take my bone folder, and just give it a little press down. And then we're just going to let that dry. And you can put this piece on before you do that if you feel like you need to. I didn't need to. It fits pretty well centered up. So totally up to you on that one. Then you have your box piece here. You're going to fold these tabs here back. And then you can open them up and fold in that side. And then the other side. And then you've got two folds on this end. You'll see on your score lines. Okay. I'm just going to give those a rub right there. Just opening it up on these ends. So we get a nice crisp fold. It kind of didn't want to fold right. It's oh yeah. Sometimes I miss that score line. All right. How many off a of 12 by 12? Good question, Susan. As soon as I glue this, we'll go over and pop over and take a look because we're going to be going to design space anyway. So you're just going to bring in this just like this okay that's what we're going to do and then you're just going to put glue over that entire area I mean these are super quick your kids can make them super easy just going to fold that in and catch those two pieces right inside just keep it square on the end same on this end and that's just because this box pulls out that you want a little bit of reinforcement on the ends because if you give them to kids, they're going to be pulling it in and out and hiding stuff in it and hiding their candy in it and stuff. This be cute for Easter too. Put the Easter bunny up here on this end. And then you're just going to slip that inside. And then we're going to put our panels on. I know, I, I love boxes too. I like doing all sorts of stuff, but boxes are one of my passions. And then you're just going to put your invite or your headstone piece right on. Super, super, super simple. Tuck your candy in there. On these, you might have to fold back the pieces. You guys know that. You, you'll figure it out. How cute. And then they stack up. If you're going to do like a trunk or treat or something like that at your church or you're in town, these will stack up on each other so that you don't have, you don't bend them up. Okay? So you can get a ton of them in a small box. I do the same thing, Louise. I, I like to deconstruct boxes and bags and everything and make my smaller design space versions of them. <laughs> things that will fit. So super, super simple. Let's pop over and take a look at the monitor again. And let's hit make it and see... I'm going to save that because I moved something evidently. And guys, if you don't know, if you see an asterisk up here, it means you have not saved. You've done something and you didn't save. Notice it's gone after saving. 
but you can hit make it. Let's start with three. Let's, I like to check my print and cut first and go that way. So I can't get six on there. And I can almost get five. So four on your print and cut, Susan, for this. And you still have a little bit of space. So I'm saying if you did probably eight or ten, two print and cut sheets. Um, and then you have, let's see, how many sheets for five? Yes, yeah, see these, I think these can be combined. So let's show how we combine. I'm going to go over there and get this one off mat 5 and select it. When I select it, I get these three dots. So I'm going to go and hit Move Object, and I'm going to bring it over. Let's bring it over here to this one. And it's going to bring it right to the same position that it was on on mat 5. I'm going to shrink this so you guys can see it. And then I'm going to take my handle, and I'm going to spin that. So I know I can get one there. And then that'll go there. So you can play around with these and probably get more on there than Cricut says you can. There's two there. And here we have mat four. So let's move that. And I'm thinking, I want to put it over here. And then I'm just going to move this here. Ooh, almost. I almost made it. Hmm. But you got to go in and play around with them. You know what? Actually, I would cut that just like that. No, I wouldn't. I would... I would probably flip one in the screen. Does that make sense? Flip one. If you flip this one in the screen, I would duplicate one over here. Duplicate. Duplicate. And then flip this one. Because it really doesn't matter. It's a solid cardstock. Now, if it's pattern, it might matter but this one won't. And then hit make it. Let's see. And I had five in there. That's going to change and give me ten boxes, but that's okay. I want to see how many I can get on two mats. This one. Move it to here. I just want to see if we can get two. And I'm going to hide that one. So if we did it this way, get that where you guys can see it. Oh, yeah. Bring that down. Turn that one sideways. So you can get two. You can get two out of one piece of paper. But you have to flip one in the screen instead of applying up here. So I would, personally, I would do it in steps. I would set up my mats like this if I were doing five. I would set it up just like this in the screen over here. So does everybody know how to do that? To attach and do it in the canvas just in case let's get a shape let's get a square and because our cut area is 11 and a half I'm just gonna make that square an 11 and a half okay we don't want to make it 12 even though that's what our material is we need it to fit in a space that's 11 and a half by 11 and a half you're gonna arrange and you're gonna send that to the back and I'm just gonna I'm just going to hide these guys. We don't need them right now for this. 
and I turned that one, let's turn that one 90 degrees. And then we've already flipped this one, so we know that'll fit. And then we're going to bring this in. And actually, you can just put two of them like that. So you, there you go. You have all of them. Yay, we have a new subscriber. Welcome, welcome. So now I'm going to take my blue square, and I am going to delete it because I don't need it. Uh, and while I have all of these on the screen, I'm going to select those and I'm going to come down to attach. Okay. Now, to do this and get the right number, you're going to have to go in and unhide. Where did those go? Unhide your pieces here. And you're going to duplicate those as well because you have two boxes, you need two sets of those. And I, you can go in and you can set those up and do the same thing with your print and cut. Your area just needs to be the 675 by 9.25. And then you can lay those out to fit in there. You just don't want to do too many when you're doing print and cut. Um, you'll bog down your design space. But these objects like these, you can do that and then duplicate it. So now it's going to go to the screen and stay where I put it. So if we were to do five sets, which would give us ten boxes, and hit apply, uh, you're going to have to have three sheets of paper, so you might want to go with 15. But you can see you've got one, two, three, four, five sheets of paper, ten boxes. So they all stay there, and you don't have to maneuver each piece around each time. So if you're making a bunch, that's the way to go. Okay? You're just making a couple, you know, you can maneuver them around like we started with. Yes, Pat, you can always do that. I, I kind of check it whenever I have large pieces and I know other pieces will fit and that does happen in that file with the uh, gate folds and the one with the sunflower that I showed you guys earlier. You can get you can't get that one little flower in there if you shrink it down just a tiny bit, then you can move it and put it up there. But Design Space is not. Because what happens is Design Space sees this, if this was a circle, even though it's a circle, Design Space sees that circle as a square. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean here. If we put in a circle, and I click on that circle, Design Space doesn't see that I could put another circle right here. It doesn't see that. It sees this bounding box. You see where that lands? It's going to say, uh, no, that won't fit. It's going to force it to fit together like so. Okay? That way the bounding boxes are not touching. But it's not going to allow you to cut it that way unless you manually move it. Okay? Because it sees that round shape as a square on the mat. Does that make sense? So always look at that. Just because, you know, Design Space says it won't fit does not necessarily mean it won't fit. Oh, you're welcome, Susan. So always check that. Now I'm just going to go to a new project so we can play around and I am just going to replace. I don't want to save any of that. And if anybody needs me to repeat that, just let us know. We'll go back and we'll do that. But what I wanted to do was come in and just throw a few images into Design Space and just kind of touch on some things um, that are in our Learning Design Space videos, such as... Um, I'm just going to pick some images here. Pick a few. Hopefully I have enough layers there. Uh, probably not. That one has. Let me get some more colors. When you're working in Design Space and there are things that you want it to do, or when you, let's put it this way, let's say you're having an issue and you don't know how to fix it. And you ask us about it in the group. 
and you say, I want this image to cut just the shape, but I want to print it. If we can't see this layers panel over here on the right, it's really, really, really difficult for us to help you. Okay? Because we look at this, when you do a screenshot and you just show us this little bit right here on the canvas, it's really tough for us to decide what you want to do, especially if it's an uploaded image and we have no clue where you got it from. Um, and it didn't come out of design space because we don't know how we can, if it's a design space image and we're familiar with it, we can run in there and grab it and look and say, okay, this is what you need to do. But it's much easier for us to look over here. This is the brain of your design space. This brain communicates with your machine and tells your machine what you want it to do. Okay? And if we can't see what's going on in the brain, we don't know what to tell you to do in the canvas so that you can convey that to your machine. So we really need all the information when you're having a problem. For instance, like this one, if you have this and you have a shape and you go and you get a square and you make it, I don't know, let's make it orange, and you put, you want to do print and cut, and I can't make anything fit tonight, there we go. And you have this, and you have grouped it, okay? With us not seeing that over there, to us, that looks like it's flattened and it's ready to go for print and cut. We have no clue. We have absolutely not a clue what, we, what you're doing with this if we can't see this. But if you say, I'm trying to print and cut, and it's cutting that out, and it won't put it on the same mat, it won't do anything, we can look over here and say, okay, first of all, it's grouped and not attached, okay? And so when you group it, all you're going to be able to do is move it around the screen and size it and for it to size properly and stay within the limits that you set, okay? If you attach it, then the black disappears. And you don't want that for print and cut because that's not going to work. Nowhere over here does it say print and cut. All that's going to do is cut that shape out of that card. Okay? That's all that's going to do. That's not what you're wanting. So if we look at it, we can tell you that. If you want this to print and cut, but you want it to cut just the square, and I always try to do it, and I can't do it. I don't know how you, some of you guys do it. <laughs> but when I get, grab both of those and I flatten, I think what some of you might be doing is coming over here and changing this to a print and then attaching. When you do that, we can look and see, well, you've got the tiger to print, but you've attached it to a square. So what's going to happen if you look over here in the brain, you are telling your design space that your tiger lying down outline is going to print and then it's going to cut. And then you have an orange square and it's going to cut that. Now it's going to go over to the mat the same right here. It's going to look the same, but it's not going to print and cut properly. It's going to print just like that and then it's going to cut all of these little black lines completely out of that square, okay? If that's not what you're wanting to do, because if that's what you want to do, attach will work because it's going to be the same result as you did when you just attached it, okay? Does that make sense? Let me duplicate. If I change this back to a cut, This one is cut. If I attach that, this and this, when it goes to your Cricut, are exactly the same. 
there is no difference in how those are going to cut. None whatsoever. They are going to cut identical. The only difference is this part that cuts out is not going to be is going to be orange on this one and it's going to be black on this one. That is the only difference. Because you told it to print that black and over here you just attached it to the orange before you did anything. So otherwise the cut result is identical. The way that you can make sure that you've got that set up for your print and cut is to come over to the designs panel here and you see that you have two layers. That is a telltale sign. Two layers will not work. Okay, so I'm going to detach that. But if you look, this is print and cut and this is cut. So I'm telling it I want to print that, but I don't really want to cut it. I want to cut the square. So I'm going to select them both, and then you're going to align them however you want to align them, the center, whatever. And then you're, while both are selected, you're going to flatten. And now you notice in the Layers panel, it doesn't say Attached anymore, but it says Flattened. And it is going to print it. It's going to print that tiger on there, and then it's only going to cut the square. It's not going to touch the tiger. The only time you should have something attached to that, oops, wrong one. The only time you should have something attached to that is if you're doing some kind of a card or you have some foiling you want to do on there or some writing or a score line, then you're going to attach that after you set it up. And now this is the only time where you should have more than one layer on a flatten. Any other time that you do that and you have more than two layers and you're not doing something special then that means you're not properly flattened because if you want to draw that line on after then you can draw that line okay they're still attached that whole thing is attached it's going to draw a line right down the middle so when you look at this if you practice and play with your layers panel you will be able to learn to read it and know what it's going to do. Okay, I can look at this one and I can say, okay, it's going to cut all of those pieces of that turtle right there. It's going to cut all of those little bitty pieces. It's going to cut these dark pieces and then it's going to cut the words and it's going to cut all of those separately and I can tell that because I can see the grid back there behind it. If you see grid back there, that is negative space. It's going to cut that negative space out of there. So if you were to flatten that, guess what? It's going to print, print it, but it's still going to cut it just like you were cutting it out of three different color papers. Don't ask me why that V is white. That's something in the file there. But um, when you go in and you do that, and when would you do something like that? Personally, if I have several colors like that and they're all little bitty pieces, I will print it and then cut it if I need to do. I will cut one. Well, let, let me back up a second. I will print two of them. And if I'm doing a dimensional, and then I will have one of them flattened to a white card and then the other one in pieces. That way I don't have to cut four pieces of paper in four different colors. I'll just let my print and cut, print the actual one, and then my layering pieces I will cut from the same print and cut sheet and layer up on top to get my dimension. So the only time you want to see grid back there is if you're maybe using that for dimensional pieces, but your other one should be flattened to a square or circle, some sort of a shape. Okay. Is everybody following with me on that? So when you look at your layers panel and you're and you're trying to decide what's going wrong, um, you can always come over here if you learn to read it. That is the key. That is the entire key to Design Space is reading your layers panel. If you learn to read that, you're home free. You've got it made. Um, if you're getting error messages, let's see, 
Oh, I'm not there yet. Not there yet. Let me get there. There we go. Uh, see how big I made that? Now I can't make my print and cut that big. I get, if I try to do that, I'm going to get rid of all this. We don't need it. I just got extra images in case we need it. If I try to make that, I'm going to get an error message. Everybody asks, what's going on? What is, what is this? Whenever you see this error message or you get the pink bar at the top, the orange bar at the top, the blue bar at the top, the green bar, usually it's going to show you in your layers panel what's wrong. So if you click that, it's going to tell you the image is too large. I have to reduce it to a size that is within 6.75 and 9.25 or less. So it's telling me right there, I can't print and cut it that big. I've got to take that down. And as soon as I get it to a spot where it will work, then that caution sign goes away. So it all comes back. Everything that you do, be it a template, text, um, any of your things up here, your contour, your attach, your weld, your grouping, your layers panel is going to reflect everything that you're telling your Cricut to do. Yes, Shirley, I mean, if you learn to, to control and, and stop a moment before you load those materials or hit that makeup button and take a look at what's going on right here, you'll have a lot less errors and a lot less wasted material. And as always, until you're used to it, if you're doing a print and cut, do it on copy paper first. Don't put your expensive vinyls and your water slides and all of those things on your mat and start cutting until you've checked it. To this day, I still print on copy paper and cut mine before I actually use my material. Because you just never know. You don't know if something has updated and changed the way that the machine is not calibrated or whatever and that you need to calibrate your print and cut because it's cutting off. You really need to check all of those things each time before you do any print and cuts. Everything else is pretty straightforward in that layers panel as far as cutting, drawing, all of those I mean it is what it is and you've attached it or you haven't attached it and if you haven't attached it you're not going to see it. It's going to be on a mat all by itself um, if you haven't attached it like you're writing inside of a card. But the main thing is reading that layers panel for your print and cut. Okay, so that is what we're talking about when we talk about let us see your brains of design space. That's what we want to see. We need to see that layers panel. If you're stuck, we are here to help you. We are going to help you, but we need to see that so we can help you. Otherwise, we're just going to play 20 questions and say, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Where's the image from? Is it in layers? Is it one layer? Is it a PNG? Is it a JPEG? If you show us what's on the layers panel and what's, I'm, I'm sorry, what's on the canvas here. This is your canvas and what's in the layers panel over here. Then we can tell you easily. Now, if you've got a ton of things in there and we can't see it, you need to select your image so that we can see which part is gray in that layers panel so that we can take a look at it because we can look at that and within seconds tell you exactly why your uh, project isn't cutting properly, what's wrong, unless it's a setting that you're using on your machine. But as far as your setup goes, we can look at it in a glance and tell you in seconds what's going on there. You can use any kind of materials, uh, Shirley. We uh, Was it three weeks ago, ladies, that we went over and we... We covered an entire um, thing on the vast array of materials that you can use for print and cut. You have iron-on, you have vinyl, adhesive vinyl, uh, you have uh, water slide materials, 
sticker material, label material, paper, um, acetate. Uh, there are just so many different printables that you can do if you have an inkjet printer. I mean, I have a whole section or a cubby hole of printables in my uh, craft room. So if I have a project, if I want to put something on a car windshield that's printable, I have the printable vinyl and then I have the UV laminate to go over it to protect that ink or what and to waterproof it. If I want to do something on a shadow box, I would use water slide. If I want to do a cup, again, I'm going to use the printable vinyl with the laminate on it. If it's just a decor, I could use water slide. Water slide won't hold up for day-to-day -day use in scrubbing. It will scrub off eventually, even if you bake it, it will come off. Yes, they have a printable, well, I said acetate. Um, it's called uh, transparency. It's a printable transparency, surely. Um, they make two kinds. One is for like copiers and stuff, and you can actually stick vinyl straight to that, but then the printable you can print on. So, tons of things. You can print on vellum. Um, there are just so many different things. Tracing papers. Tons of stuff. And you can get, you can print the same image on several different mediums and get a different look with each one. So, take some practice. Yes, only certain kinds. You do not want the kind for silk screen. It is cloudy and it will remain cloudy. There's nothing you can do about it. It is cheaper, but it is cloudy. If you're doing floating ornaments, that doesn't work. Um, but if you're doing um, the printable transparency for inkjet, then it will be perfectly clear with your print on it. Yeah, if you print on the wrong side, there's a rough side and a smooth side on those transparencies, Pat. And the rough side is the side you want to print on. So you, if you're using your main tray on your printer, that will go around rollers. You need to know how your printer is going to pick it up and do that. If you're doing it from a rear tray, then it's just going to go straight through. So it would matter which way you put it. On mine, if I use my main tray, the rough side goes face down in my printer. If I put it in the rear tray, the rough side goes up. So most that is the way with most printers, but I always say put an X or something on a sheet of paper and feet at, at, on the very top and print something and you'll know which way it goes. Oh, it wasn't the printable kind. Yeah, that, it, it won't work. It, trust me, even the kind for copiers won't work because those copiers, I think those are for more for a um, the write-on type for copy machines like the old, I'm trying to, toner, toner machines. So, I, I've tested just about every kind of material you can test out there and you have to get the right materials. All right, does anybody have any questions on Design Space? Anything you need me to show you? Any, any questions whatsoever? Guys, don't be scared to ask. This is what we're here for. On Mondays, we we're going to do some Design Space learning and refreshing and some quick projects. And then on Wednesdays, I am releasing files for you guys with the recorded tutorials. That's just so I can free up a little bit of time for myself um, and not be so rushed and bogged down all the time so that I can bring better projects. All right. That's... So you guys make up your little boxes, and again, I forgot to show you guys, but you know how to use your slice feature. You're going to detach your score lines and just let them set to the side or to the back, 
and then you're just going to take a shape and slice it off right here and weld on what other shape you might want to use here. It's all you have to do. Okay. Uh, see. You're playing with your joy writing on the inside. Right. Um, the way, yeah, that one, that one's a little tricky, Shirley. I, I did that too. You have to kind of guesstimate and, and get that, figure out where you want it to be and do that writing on the other side. That's the way I do mine anyway. I fold the card backwards and slide it over that mat and then position that writing where I think it needs to be <laughs> and go for it. Yes, please give a thumbs up. Please, 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 please like and subscribe, guys. If you don't want to get notified every time that I go live or I post a video, you don't have to turn on notifications if you don't want to. But please, please, please subscribe. That is my birthday wish. Okay? That is what I'm wishing for my birthday is that we at least double my subscribers. So invite your friends and family. They don't have to have notifications on. Tell them all to subscribe. All right. So change it. Do a little bit of change up on these guys and put your own stamps, your own touches on these, and post them in the group. Let's let's see what you guys do with these. These are really going to be really cute for the neighborhood kids and stuff this year. Yay! All right, I want to say thank you to my moderators. You guys are the best on the net. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you to all of my supporters on Kofi Patreon and on YouTube. Greatly appreciate all of you guys as well. Couldn't do this without you. Without you, there's no reason for me to do it. So, <laughs> you guys have a wonderful week. I will be live again on... Um, I'm not going to be live on Monday because that is my actual birthday, but I will be live on Tuesday for you guys. Okay, I'm just moving it. Patreon, there should be on the video up there and down below and up on the top right corner and down below, surely there's a Patreon link. If you're not a supporter, you can become a supporter and get access to all of my files. Yay, there's Linda. I thought I saw you earlier. You guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Look for that file coming up on Wednesday, and I will catch you on Tuesday.